There is one question that, when I asked myself consistently, changed the entire scope of how I viewed and approached everything in my life. I used to have a terrible relationship with sleep. From the ages of 5 to 12, I'd almost always dread the time when the sun would set, the street lights would turn on, and the TV in my living room downstairs would shut off. Because that combination of sensory inputs meant that I had to face something that I was irrationally afraid of. I'm not sure what it was about being in a room alone at night, even when my parents were just right across the hall, but I could not convince myself that I was not, in fact, in any sort of real danger. When my parents confronted me about my nocturnal conflicts and asked me why they happened, I told them, I don't know, I just feel like a robber could break into the house or my window and you guys wouldn't get to my room in time to save me. This paranoia was only further intensified when I had seen something scary in the media that day, like those disturbing salad fingers videos on YouTube that my older sister would show me, or when I'd watch a scary movie at a friend's house during a sleepover. And yes, I was that kid who would wake up their parents at 3am telling them that I needed to call my mom to come pick me up. I even did it one time when I couldn't fall asleep after watching the movie Taken when I was 11 years old. I will kill you. That's not even a scary movie. I tried going to therapy for it. My parents tried to bribe me by saying, if I get you these Spongebob bed sheets, then you have to promise you'll sleep in your own bed from now. And I must have tried every bed light imaginable. But no matter what, I was still afraid of the idea of leaving myself completely vulnerable in the obscurity of the darkness. And of course I was, because none of those supposed solutions ever addressed the root of the problem. In other words, none of those things ever had me asking that one transformative question. What are you unwilling to feel? If you were to ask me what is the biggest factor that controls most young people's decisions, I would answer with just one word. Fear. We try to be someone we're not because we're afraid of being judged. We put up walls with our peers because we're afraid of them seeing our imperfections and vulnerabilities. And we take the path of least resistance because we're afraid of the discomfort that comes from doing difficult things or what's outside of the norm. Whether we are consciously aware of it or not, and to be honest, the majority of us aren't, we are all running away from a feeling that manifested in us long ago that has since been sent to the depths of our mind. As a child, we come into the world as pure as we'll ever be, unaware of the horrifying terrors and sufferings we will soon have to inevitably face. Our parents, whose job is to protect and provide for our illiterate, incompetent, chubby cheeks, tend to do their best at not letting these horrors get into us when we're too young. But ultimately, this is an inescapable fact that catches up to all of us eventually. What's worse is that for a lot of us, our parents weren't taught how to parent properly. When they first had you, the best they could do is get word of mouth from other parents or read a book about parenting. But how do you try to summarize the infinite complexity of our still unfinished description of the human psyche into one digestible book? More often than not, parents also feel pressure, the same pressure that we all feel growing up, to fit in with other parents by instilling the same set of beliefs, ideals, and ways of living that they and others are doing as well as they can. For some, that might look like being the overly protective parent. Your mom or dad couldn't fathom the idea of you injuring yourself or failing or getting into trouble, and so they pampered your reality to look like one of those pictures that Instagram influencers take inside a fake private jet. On the inside, everything feels safe, secure, and certain. But the reality of life eventually caught up with you once you stepped outside of that plane, and you realized there was so much you refused to feel when you had to join the real world. For others, it's almost the complete opposite. Since childhood, they were never given the ideal amount of protection and support. Their parents went through their own fair share of trauma or misfortunes or just couldn't handle the reality that life is pretty fucking hard, and they thought to themselves, you know what, let me take it out on my kid. And being the slightly removed from the animal kingdom animal that you are, your brain and body eventually conditioned yourself that the best way to deal with all the verbal and maybe physical abuse, the difficult times, the friends that weren't really friends, the inability to connect with others, the depression, and the existential dread was to shut down your unwanted emotions completely when they were triggered to come back to the surface. Either that, or you find a way to escape them in the form of substances, noise, or pleasurable stimuli. No matter how you were raised or how you experienced life in your younger years, the result is still the same. Negative feelings, emotions, experiences, or sensations come as an unavoidable part of life, and you tell yourself, I shouldn't be feeling this way, so let me do everything in my power to not feel this way any longer. 
So I guess this takes us back to my dilemma with the darkness as a kid. I'm not really too sure that I can say that my fear of being alone at night was created due to the way my parents raised me or something I watched or some other experience that I had that created that belief. Finding the location of the beginning of the problem isn't really that important most of the time. All I really needed to know was what I was unwilling to feel. This problem I had that lasted much longer than it does for most kids ended up fixing itself eventually by the time I was around 13. And while I didn't ever consciously think of the solution and apply it at that age, I can only imagine that the reason it solved itself was because for the first time in my life, I allowed myself to dive into the darkness. <sighs> I walked up to my fear's front door, which read vulnerability and risk, and I was the one who decided to knock on it. What greeted me when it opened baffled me. A mutant of sorts, with all kinds of weird objects sticking out of it, covered in sludge that soon ended up touching the tip of my toes. As I cautiously took a step back, but not too far back to the point where I defend my fear, I asked it, do you mind if I come in? And it accepted my request and led me into its room. Before I could get a chance to speak, it said, Why have you kept me locked away here for so long? Don't you know how that's felt? I tried to think of what to say, but the words did not come to me. Don't you know that I'm just a product of your life experience and the human condition, and I'm supposed to be met with the same affection and attention as your happiness, joy, and pleasure? I only came to look like this because you decided to ignore me for so long. I looked at my fear intently. The darkness surrounding its eyes, the dirt and grime covering it which reflected its neglect. And I said to it, it was so hard for me to accept you. I didn't want to believe you were real. It's so much easier to come to terms with and feel those more positive aspects of reality, but dealing with you is much more complicated. I don't even understand why you have to exist in the first place. I don't know why I even exist either, it said. But I do know that I can offer you more wisdom than you could ever imagine. In the darkness, you will find what you've been seeking for in the light. You know that motivation that you think you can only find when you feel good? Well, you can find it just as much, if not more, within me. You know those days where you feel depressed and unworthy of love, and so you turn to your addictions to numb the pain? I can give you the antidote to your numbness, so long as you develop the ability to listen. But I'm afraid that if I listen, I said, I will become the darkness. Don't you think you're dangerous? My fear looked at me with a serious face, then uttered, It was Nietzsche who famously said, Battle not with monsters, lest ye become a monster. And if you gaze into the abyss, the abyss gazes also into you. It is true that spending too much time here would be unwise, and you would soon start to resemble my current character. But paying zero attention to me will only cause my domain within you to swell up, until it bursts into something more catastrophic than you could ever imagine. Just as you do not reject a laugh, or the feeling of wholeness, or when everything just feels right in the world, you cannot reject me when I start to arise. Spend some time here, feel me, communicate with me, and attend to me for just a little while, and you will be able to conquer all of life's challenges. I agreed and hung out with my fear in its dark realm. And in doing so, I learned many things. I learned that dark could not exist without light, that happiness could not exist without sadness, and that pain could not exist without pleasure. And by giving myself permission to feel afraid of the dark, its object of power no longer had the same control over me. By having the willingness to be afraid, I became, paradoxically, less afraid. And that night, I slept in isolated and unbothered sleep. Turn on a cold shower, and what do you feel at the very thought of stepping into it? If you're not yet adjusted to the cold water, or you're a chronic comfort zone enjoyer, your brain will probably give you a million excuses as to why you shouldn't step in. In other words, it will tell you, please do not get uncomfortable. That is a feeling you don't want to feel. The same can be said of so many other things you want to do. You don't go talk to that stranger because you're afraid of the feeling of embarrassment and awkwardness. You don't start that passion project because you're unwilling to feel what it's like to be garbage at the start, you're unwilling to feel the heat of others judging you, and you're unwilling to feel what it's like to fail consistently at something in order to become better. And you can't focus on anything because you're unwilling to feel what it's like to be genuinely bored, doing nothing in order to get your attention span back. 
And so you see, asking yourself this question can unlock the key to self-acceptance that was buried within you years ago due to traumas or past negative experiences, but it can also help you unlock the key to self-improvement as a whole. Because when you're in that moment, right before you're about to do something that you know will be good for you, that you know will bring you long-term fulfillment and strengthen the development of your character, and you tell yourself, I am willing to feel whatever I deem to be as negative that comes with this experience, you win no matter what. So the next time you go through that random period of sadness, that bout of pain, that insecurity, that embarrassing moment, or that difficult, insufferable task, ask yourself, what am I unwilling to feel? And pretty soon, if you continue to answer this question with love instead of deflection, no mountain will be too tall for you to climb. These concepts are admittedly difficult to practice on your own without any accountability, without any external motivation. So if you need extra help, if you're trying to get to that next level, then you should come and join me in my Ultimate Self Mastery course. This is a 14 video course with around 3 hours of content and 15 plus worksheets to go with each video. The biggest problem I see with generic self-improvement videos is people watch a ton of them, they try to apply the advice, and it helps for a little bit, but then they always go back to who they always were. And that's because they don't address the root of these problems and they don't have you really diving deep into yourself and applying things and getting accountability. And that's why I made this course. I spent, I think, a little over 500 hours creating these videos, but really what's been the most impactful thing for all the people who have joined is the accountability group, our exclusive self-mastery group. We meet in a video call every other weekend to discuss ideas, to get more motivation and accountability, and just get a little inspiration from each other because everyone in there is all trying to do something bigger than themselves and seeing what those guys are doing, it helps inspire me as well and keeps me motivated. If you have been struggling with actually seeing significant change in your life, if you join this course, you apply the worksheets and you stay active in this community, I guarantee you we will help you to get where you want to be. And for the month of April, I'm going to be running a sale, which I'm really only going to talk about in this video, where if you use the code MASTERY10 at checkout, you will get 10% off your purchase of the course. And I hope to see you in there. Thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. That is where you can get exclusive content from me. If you want to check that out, link in the description. And if you aren't ready to join the Self Mastery course, then just check out all of my self-improvement videos in this playlist right here. Hope it helps, and thanks for watching till the end. Peace.